The distance between two points depends on the frame of reference of the observer. The rest length of an object is defined as the length of the object as measured by an observer in the same frame of reference as the object. To explain this, imagine the following thought experiment. A light source and a detector are located at the rear of a train carriage and a mirror at the front. A pulse of light is emitted from the light source, travels the length of the carriage and is reflected back by the mirror and returns striking the rear wall. The two beams of light are shown separate in the image for the sake of clarity, but in the thought experiment imagine them as travelling along the same path in both directions. There is an observer in the train carriage and a second observer standing on a platform watching the train pass with a velocity v. Both observers can accurately record the timing of events in terms of their frame of reference. In the carriage frame of reference, the observer within the carriage would measure the length as being L subscript 0 and the time taken for the pulse of light to travel from one end of the carriage to the far end and then back again as T subscript 0. In the platform frame of reference, the observer would measure the length as L and the time as T subscript V. As from their point of view, the train carriage moves on between the time at which the light is emitted and it arrives at the mirror at the far end of the carriage and it also moves on from the time that the pulse of light is reflected from the mirror and returns back to its starting point. In the carriage frame of reference, according to observer 1, the length equals L subscript 0 and the time equals T subscript 0. The length of the carriage, L subscript 0, is the length measured in terms of the frame of reference of the carriage. The time required for the light to make the round trip is delta T subscript 0 equals 2 L subscript 0 over C, twice the length of the carriage divided by the speed of light, the speed at which the pulse of light is moving. In the lower diagram showing the view of an observer on the platform, the carriage moves a distance V delta T1 in the time it takes the light signal to travel from the rear to the front of the carriage. The distance D from the source to the mirror is now D equals L plus V delta T1. The rest length of the carriage plus the distance the carriage has moved on while the pulse of light was moving from one end of the carriage to the other. Where L is the length of the carriage as seen by an observer on the platform. We can also say that D equals C delta T1. That the distance equals the speed of light multiplied by the time it takes the pulse of light to travel from one end of the carriage to the other according to the observer standing on the platform. Combining our two equations for D we get C delta T1 equals L plus V delta T1 or delta T1 equals L over C minus V. Using a similar methodology the time T2 for the return trip is delta T2 equals L over C plus V. The total time for the return trip is thus delta T subscript V equals delta T1 plus delta T2. The time for the pulse of light to travel in the forwards direction from one end of the carriage to the other plus the time it takes a light to travel from the mirror at which it is reflected back to its starting position. Or, delta T subscript V equals L over C minus V plus L over C plus V equals 2L over C outside of 1 minus V squared on C squared. We can combine the equation for the round trip in terms of the frame of reference of the carriage with the equation for time dilation from the last lecture to obtain an equation for the rest length in terms of T subscript V. T subscript naught squared over T subscript V squared equals 1 minus V squared on C squared. Solving for T subscript 0 we get T subscript 0 equals delta T subscript V multiplied by the square root of 1 minus V squared on C squared. 
Substituting this into the equation for the rest length, delta T naught equals 2 L subscript 0 over C, we get the equation delta T subscript V multiplied by the square root of 1 minus V squared on C squared equals 2 L subscript naught on C. We can combine our equations for L subscript naught and L as both are now in terms of T subscript V. We have the two equations delta T subscript V equals 2L over C outside of 1 minus V squared on C squared and delta TV multiplied by the square root of 1 minus V squared on C squared equals 2 L subscript naught on C. Substituting for delta T subscript V in the second equation we get 2L over C outside of 1 minus V squared on C squared multiplied by the square root of 1 minus v squared on c squared equals 2 L naught on c. The c's on both sides of the equation cancel out and we are left with 2 L over 1 minus v squared on c squared in brackets multiplied by the square root of 1 minus v squared on c squared equals 2 L subscript naught which can be simplified to 2L over the square root of 1 minus V squared on C squared equals 2L subscript naught. Rearranging this gives L equals L subscript naught multiplied by the square root of 1 minus V squared on C squared which is now in the form of the equation given in the syllabus. Lengths perpendicular to relative motion are not contracted. Only lengths parallel to the relative motion are contracted. In the example below, for a vessel travelling from left to right, as the relative velocity of the spaceship to a stationary observer increases, the length of the spaceship decreases, while the height of the spaceship remains the same. It is only the length in the direction of the relative velocity that is contracted. Defining length. In 1791, the French Academy of Sciences defined the metre as one ten millionth of the distance from the pole to the equator along the meridian passing through Paris. A number of standard metres were set up in public places. In 1983 the metre was redefined as the length of the pass travelled by light in a vacuum during a time interval of 1 over 2997924584 seconds. This also had the effect of defining the speed of light in a vacuum as exactly 299,792,458 metres per second, as length was now defined in terms of the speed of light, the speed of light was also defined in terms of length. Summary. The length of an object is contracted in the direction of relative motion an observer in a different frame of reference. The length at right angles is not, however, contracted. The formula for length contraction is L equals L subscript 0 multiplied by the square root of 1 minus V squared on C squared, where L is the length in the direction of motion as seen by an observer in a frame of reference moving relative to the object's frame of reference. L naught is the rest length the length of the object as measured in the object's frame of reference. V is a relative velocity between the frame of reference of the object and the frame of reference of the observer. And C is the speed of light in a vacuum. In 1983, the meter was defined in terms of the speed of light. This also had the effect of defining the speed of light. The speed of light in a vacuum is now 299,792,458 metres per second by definition.